because I have an invisible disability, people oftentimes feel like I'm faking my disability to bring my dog. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Jen and this is Fairby and today we're going to talk about service dog discrimination. Technically it's a discrimination against me because I need her with me. So if you're discriminating against her, you're discriminating against me. I just want to pop in here and say really quickly that this is from my perspective. This is not everyone's experience. So obviously your experience is going to be different than mine. So the first thing I want to talk about is just going new places in general with your service dog can be extremely nerve wracking because you don't know if you're going to get denied access. You don't know if you're going to be segregated. So that can be super upsetting just to even walk into a new situation or a new place. That's a fear anytime I go somewhere new. I'm pretty sure it's a fear that most of us with service dogs deal with because we're not sure, you know, what's gonna happen. So if we go a new place, it is like, ooh, how's this gonna pan out for us? So that's a form of discrimination that I constantly live with if I go new places. So also on that same topic, it's degrading when someone has to ask their manager if it's okay if we sit inside or ask their manager if it's okay if we come in or hold on, let me just go check with my manager first. The people who say, we'll make an exception this time. You are not making an exception this time. You are not making an exception to let me into your establishment. It is the freaking law. You cannot deny me service. You can't deny me access because I'm disabled. You can't do that. So stop saying it's an exception. Like I've actually had someone say this recently. Oh, so it's okay for a dog to be in here? Whenever she's in her vest, she has medical equipment. She's not a dog. So that's a form of discrimination on its own right there. I feel like it's discrimination when people say that my dog is a marketing tool or a marketing prop. And I've experienced this recently. People truly are uneducated. We'll say that. They're uneducated and they don't know and they don't realize that's hurtful. I am disabled. I have to have her with me. It is not because I'm choosing to bring my dog somewhere. And you wouldn't say that to somebody with a wheelchair. Don't say it to me. You wouldn't say, oh wow, I bet that wheelchair is a good marketing tool. No, it's not. No, it's not. I feel like I almost have to prove myself even more because obviously I know, I know when people meet me, I know that I present like there's something off. And I know that. And I feel like I have to kind of overcompensate for that. Um, especially whenever I'm trying to get business because I know there is something different. And it may not be obvious to everyone, it's really obvious to me, but I feel like I have to try that much harder. No one has made me feel like that, by the way, this is just things that I feel on my own. But for someone to point blank say that my dog's a marketing tool, it's like, you know how hard it was for me to even get up and come out here? And then you're gonna like degrade me and say my dog's a marketing tool. Don't do that to people. We don't have our service dogs with us for attention. And if anything, I can say the majority of us, and I do know this to be true, the majority of us would prefer that you just ignore the dog. Don't talk to the dog, don't ask us about the dog. Obviously watch out for the dog, don't step on the dog, but you know what I mean. Don't, don't go to the dog. Don't say, oh, the dog's so cute, or oh, what is your dog's name? Or whatever, just, just don't, just don't pretend she's not there. She needs an invisibility cloak, she's working, she's here for me, not for you, pretend she's not there. Because I have an invisible disability, people oftentimes feel like I'm faking my disability to bring my dog. And I've had people ask, so what does she do? So what is she there for? And then I say, she's medical alert. Because I'm not gonna go into my details. I might, honestly, I might go into my details, but that's for me to decide. And if I feel like I wanna talk about it, or if I don't, then, you know. So people will say, oh no, but like, for what? That is not your business. So for you to ask me to prove how disabled I am, or I've had someone ask me to demonstrate what she does before. She's not gonna just task whenever I'm standing here fine. Like that's not how it works. Like she's not gonna just like suddenly spring into action. Now we can practice our task, but I'm not gonna do that because you asked me to. You can't do that. So that's another form of discrimination in my opinion because you're asking me to prove that I'm disabled, prove that my dog is needed. And by the way, this has not been from an establishment, this has been from an individual person. Just let that sink in. Someone I randomly met asking me to prove my disability in the middle of a grocery store. 
Another thing that I feel like is service dog discrimination is when people discount the fact that I have to have my dog to live. I've had people say things like, oh, I didn't know this was pet friendly. I would have brought my dog. Or, and it's like, okay, it's not pet friendly. I didn't just bring my dog. I'm disabled, I need her to live. So that's irritating just on its own. I need my dog to live. I need my dog to even function, like live on my own, to be able to go to the store, to be able to do normal things that you can do. I need my dog for that. So I also feel like it's discrimination when people feel like they can question if I need my dog or not. My dog is my accommodation for living a normal life. I need her to live a normal life. I need her to function as a normal person or as normal as I can possibly be. Without her, I can't live alone. Without her, I can't go to the grocery store alone. I can't do anything alone because I don't know when something's going to happen to me. I need her there for my life, basically, so that I can live a life. Totally just lost my train of thought and I even made notes and I still lost my train of thought. <laughs> Something I wanna bring up is that if my dog is in a vest, she is not a dog at that point. She's medical equipment at that point. So she's not supposed to be treated like a normal dog. People are not supposed to interact with her. They're supposed to look, kind of look over her, so to speak, and just pretend she's not there. She is there, she's working, she's for me, she's not for you. That sounds really bad and it sounds mean and I feel like I constantly have to tell people to ignore her, tell her leave it or something like that. We did recently come across someone who physically got down on the ground and called her and was then whenever I, you know, was like able to get her attention again. I mean, cause she did, she actually walked over because they were like so in the floor, like calling her that she was just like, this must be okay. Cause no one's done that in a really long time. Also I was sitting down. So I think for her, the lines were a little bit blurred, which we need to work on that obviously. But at that point, um, and also by the way, I wasn't being as stern with her as I normally would be because we were at a networking event and I was trying basically not to look like a bitch. And then the person proceeded to keep like making squeaky sounds and things at her to get their get her attention to try to take a picture of her. They just kept trying to interact with her. At that point, when something like that happens, and I, something's going on weird here. So when something like that happens, I feel like I look like an asshole, to be honest. And I don't want people to perceive me as being rude but I feel like the general public looks at you like you're an ass whenever you're like, no, you can't talk to my dog or please stop calling my dog or she's not supposed to do that and you're not supposed to interact with her or like I've even covered her eyes before. I've done all kinds of things and people just keep on. It makes it really uncomfortable. And like I said, if I'm in the grocery store or if I'm out shopping or doing something, I don't have a problem advocating for myself in that situation because basically I'm not gonna see these people again and I don't care if I do because you're wrong and I know you're putting me in danger. Whenever I'm at something that I need to be friendly and making friends and trying to network and someone does that, it's a totally different feeling and it makes me feel like I need to tread lightly stand up for myself, but also tread lightly because I feel like I can't advocate for myself as much as I need to because I'm gonna be looked at like I'm a bitch. There are at least two people that I flat out made them think that I was the biggest bitch that ever has blocked the face of this earth. I know I did. I think I said, yeah, I'm trying to not, I'm trying to have her avoid you because you keep distracting her. This wasn't the first incident with this person and I thought I'd made it clear before and then I guess I didn't, but I know they think I'm an asshole now. And that sucks because people talk about you and people will say you're a bitch because of that. And that sucks. And then there's another person I'm pretty sure that I made them feel uncomfortable recently because they thought it was dog friendly because I had my dog and I was quick to tell them that no, it's not dog friendly. She's a service dog. You're not supposed to bring dogs here. And I'm pretty sure they thought I was an asshole for that too. It's just all this stuff people don't realize. And then I've even had someone recently comment on a video on my channel about how someone was mean to them for bringing their dog into Walmart in a stroller. Their dog's not a service dog, but somebody in the store yelled at them and they felt like that was wrong. 
you are breaking the law. By the way, either they deleted their comment or either YouTube blocked it, but I saw it in my email. I wasn't able to reply to them. Whenever you do bring your dog who's not supposed to be somewhere, snuck them in, and then your dog does something stupid, it makes it harder for the person who comes along next with a legit service dog. So that is why it's problematic. If for people to say things like, oh, I didn't know it was dog friendly, I'll bring my dog next time. This brings me to another point. I feel like I've rambled so much, but this brings me to another point. I feel like people have two impressions of me. Either you have the impression that you get whenever you meet me and you talk to me first and you talk to me like I'm a human and you don't sit there and only talk to my dog. And then you have the impression of me if you approach my dog first. And those are two totally different people. If you approach me first, I'm friendly, I'm talkative, I'm nice, I wanna to talk to you. Like, I want to be friends with everyone. But if you approach my dog first, then you think I'm an asshole. I know you do, I know you do, because you've approached my dog first and you've not treated me like I'm a person or you've tried to distract my dog from me and that's putting my safety at risk. So I feel like this is probably the same for most people with service dogs, either people meet you and they're like wow she's so nice or he's so nice they are so nice and if they talk to your dog first they're like wow that person's a jerk or they must be in a bad mood or something like that and i feel like that is the same vibe that everyone gives off who has a service dog because it's automatic like you're on the defense so it's just crazy and I know I've sat here and talked about all kinds of things that are negative to do with having a service dog, but for me personally, the negatives that we've discussed here today do not outweigh the pros. I made her to function and because of her, I'm able to have a, what I consider pretty normal life. And that means so much to me, just to be able to function and, and like live normally and not have to have a human go with me everywhere because I don't have a human. So it means a lot. And I know this might seem like I'm complaining today. I'm just trying to raise awareness about this because I feel like it's something that needs to be talked about. And I know a lot of this is not discrimination. This is just weird stuff that happens with a service dog. I feel like some of it is discrimination. So we're just gonna call it discrimination for an overarching, overarching, overarching word here. But for me personally, the pros of having her do outweigh not having her. I've done a pros and cons video, so I'll link that for you guys. And I feel like there was something else I wanted to talk about. And this kind of is back on that thing where people say, oh, I didn't know it was dog friendly or I'll bring my dog next time too. We've even had people that we know personally think they were gonna bring their dog somewhere because I had her with us. And it's like, I don't know how people who know me personally don't realize that I'm disabled at this point and don't realize that I have a service dog who's required to be with me. Just because I have my dog with me doesn't mean that it's dog friendly. And I think that's something that is a really big problem. The non-service dog community that does it, who sees a service dog somewhere and is like, oh, I didn't know it was dog friendly. And then the next time they bring their dog or they'll say something like, I wish I could have my dog with me all the time. You wanna be disabled? You don't wish that. So the misuse of a service dog and people calling an ESA a service dog and people just bringing their pet places, it really hurts the service dog community so much. It puts our lives in danger, it puts our service dog's lives in danger, and it just makes access harder for us. By the way, emotional support dogs don't have public access rights. You don't have that. Your dog or your cat, anything can be an ESA. A great example of this is that guy with the alligator that posted about on Instagram recently. This dude takes his alligator places with him. Y'all, it's a gator. You cannot control a gator. I'm sure he's the goodest good boy alligator in the world. I'm sure he is. But if you think that alligator can't like get out of this little harness and go bite my dog or bite me or bite a kid, you're crazy. That is not supposed to be in public. But it doesn't mean that that alligator is any less valid for that person. If that person needs an emotional support animal, anything can be an emotional support animal. And there's nothing wrong with having an alligator for that if that's what you feel like you want, but it doesn't have public access rights. So stop taking your emotional support, whatever, out in public. If I see you out with an emotional support alligator, 
I'm immediately going to go into a panic attack because I know just common sense says you cannot control that alligator if it wants to lunge at us. You can't control that. We've not encountered an alligator. I saw him on Instagram, but it's still a point. That's bullshit. Don't do that. So basically the point of all this is don't discriminate against people with service dogs. Don't segregate us. Don't only talk to our dogs. Don't just talk to us because we have a dog. Don't let your only conversation you have with somebody who has a service dog be about their dog. If you wouldn't interact with them, otherwise don't interact with them. Don't do dumb stuff. <laughs> Please don't do dumb stuff that puts us in danger. Like call our dogs. Don't do any of this. So moral of the story, discrimination is wrong. If you're discriminating against my service dog, you're actually discriminating against me as a disabled woman. Same thing with any other type of discrimination. You're discriminating against the person, not the thing. So don't do that. Be sure to leave a comment and let me know if you've experienced service dog discrimination. Also, of course, I'm sure I've left things out because this is only my experience. So leave comments below. Let me know your experience with it. I'd love to start a conversation on this. Also, please be sure to talk about this on your social media. There's no reason we should be silent about this. This is a form of discrimination. It's not cool. Share this video, share videos like it, share your story on your social media. Let people know this is a thing that happens. That's the only way we're gonna change this type of thing that happens to us. And I know as service dog handlers, every single one of us has experienced at least one of these things before. All right guys, thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate you being here today. I will link another service dog video, probably pros and cons or something like that right here for you guys. Something just for you here. A subscribe button up here. We hope you have an awesome day and we will see you soon. Bye guys.